impregnable, often imitated, never duplicated, one of one. They don't make them like him anymore. The pride of Brownsville, arguably the most famous boxer of the last 50 plus years, returning to the ring for the first time in about four years. The one and only, the baddest man on the planet, Iron Mike Tyson. Hey, listen, right? It was good while it lasted for Jake. The most brutal, the most vicious, the most ruthless champion there has ever been. I got money on you, right? You better. You better. One more time. Everyone together. The baddest man on the planet now and forever. Iron Mike Tyson. All right. Let's get into things. Mike, it's good to see you again. Thank you. Th thank you. Fight week. You haven't been in one of these for about four years. You did an open workout yesterday. Everyone's asking you why, how, give us the reason. Forget about all that. Old news at this point. Everyone wants to know what's going through your mind. Is the old mic back? Is vintage mic back? Let us know. Are you talking to me right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm back, yeah. You're the star. I'm just happy to be here. Um, I love you, too. Thank you. Jake, there have been moments in the build-up to this fight where it did feel like the old Mike was back, vintage Mike. I'm not talking, you know, late 2000s Mike. I'm talking like, you know, 1989 Mike Tyson. You're the guy that he's talking about. You're the opponent. You're the guy that's going to be facing off with him. You're watching this. You're listening to this. What goes through your mind when you hear him go into that dark place? Yeah, it's cute. You know, I fear no man, so I want him to be that old savage Mike. He says he's going to kill me. Is that, is that what you're going to do, Mike? Because I'm ready. I, I want that killer. I want the hardest match possible Friday night, and I want there to be no excuses from everyone at home when I knock him out. So is, is that what you're going to bring, homicidal? I'm just ready. That's all I can say. I'm just ready. I don't think anyone has ever referred to Mike Tyson's talk as cute before. That is a first. Mike, the line that I can't get enough of, the one that I keep watching over and over again, when you and your team were watching Jake after the Mike Perry fight, you said the difference between me and him is that he's a manufactured killer. He's, he's the killer that papers and TV made. I'm a natural born killer. That's what you said. That, that we felt in our bones. That's what everyone who grew up watching you remembers. Can you expand on that? Why is he manufactured and why are you for real? Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said. Yeah, I was just wondering if you can expand on that. I mean, can you give me... It's just what it's I just said. It's just that. All right. That's, that's cool. Uh, when you hear that, do you agree with that, Jake? Is there something to that? Whatever he wants to think, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but the deadliest weapon on the planet is manufactured, and that's a nuke. All right. I do believe that is accurate. Um, and what is going on with your ear over there, Jake, if I could just ask that? I'm not getting my shit bit off on Friday night, so I got my diamond spiked ear covers right there. All right. Uh, let me turn my attention to the two women competing in the co-main event. We'll start with the champion, the undisputed champion, the patron saint of the Emerald Isle, the great Katie Taylor. Always an honor to be in her presence. Here we are, Katie. I know you hate this stuff. You hate the face-to-faces. You hate the press conferences. You hate the talk. The main talk has been, though, her, Jake, her team have all said she deserved to win at Madison Square Garden. What do you have to do to put an end to that talk? Um, well, I believe that I won the last fight, clearly, and um, I'm just going to go in there Friday night and, be and beat her again. Um, I put my body through the trenches over these last few months. An absolute privilege to be here on the same card as a legend in the sport, and um, it's absolutely an amazing opportunity um, that we both have, and I just can't wait to step in there and showcase what I can do again and get a another win. 
You know, uh, Amanda, you guys have you know, broken so many barriers. You in particular, you've broken so many barriers and MSG was historic. This is a different type of history. Biggest platform, two women fighting in the co-main event under these two gentlemen. Do you take that pressure on your shoulders going into Friday? Are you representing women's boxing as well or is that a mistake? Can you not think of it that way? Well, first of all, I would like to say, Ariel, how are you doing right now? I'm doing great. I, I, know, you, I know you're in a tough spot right no, now. No, <laughs> Us New Yorkers, we got to look out for each other. Thank you. Okay, okay. That. No, the pressure's always um, there when you're trying to be a face of, of a sport, but I feel like I'm not the f just the face. There's a lot of us that come together. We made history together. I made history multiple times, and I just have to go out there and make sure that I perform like I did the last time, and women won. Is there a lesson that you took away among the many, but maybe an overarching one, because it was so close, because you didn't eventually get the nod, a lesson that you will look to apply come Friday in this fight? Listen, I'm gonna do what I do best, and that's come to fight. We appreciate that, can't wait for it as well. Uh, by the way, Mike, can I ask you one more? Perhaps uh, there, there's more to this. A lot of the talk going into this fight has been about your history, about your upbringing, perhaps some new fans learning about your history for the first time. Um, a, big, a big story, a big part of your history, of course, your first trainer, the great, the late great, Customato. What do you think he would say of this spectacle going down on Friday? He'd be very happy. What do you think he would tell you about how to beat Jake Paul? He would be very happy. All right. Uh, let us go to the uh, media. I do believe there is some media here. We'll go to my man, Andreas Hale, up first. By the way, let us know where you're coming from and obviously who your question is being addressed to. Yes, sir. Andreas Hale from ESPN. Jake, this question's for you. We know this fight is eight rounds, two minutes, but is there any chance this goes to a decision or does this have to end in a knockout? No, someone's getting put to sleep. It's going to be a war, and we're both heavy hitters. It's not going the full 16 minutes. Question for Mike Tyson. Mike. The question is, Jake Paul, the biggest clown within boxing. If Mike lets you... No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Go back to Andreas. Go back to Andreas. Go back to Andreas. Is that Tony Bellew? That looks like Tony Bellew. It is Tony Bellew. It does? Is that Tony Bellew or is it Darren Till? Andreas, keep going. Yes, sir. Now, what is this? A Fisher Price microphone? I can't. I actually can't tell if it's Tony Bellew. Is it? Okay, Andreas, keep going. No, legit. Is it Tony Bellew? I can't tell. Is it Tony Bellew? Fifty extra pounds? Okay. Andreas, go ahead. Yes, sir. Andreas, go ahead. Mike Tyson, Mike, this question is for you. Given everything that you've gone through in your life and your career, you're coming back to the ring at the age of 58. How big would this be for your life to pull off this epic comeback and beat Jake Paul on Friday night? I'm just ready to fight. You know, I've, I've said everything I had to say. There's nothing else to say. I'm just looking forward to fighting. All right, thank you, Andreas. I do believe we have uh, another question right over here. Hey, guys, Joey Hayden, Dallas Morning News. My question is from Mike. Mike, when you look around at the stage around multiple title fights, one of the most anticipated women's fights in history behind you, there's a lot of people that say this fight between you and Jake isn't to the level of professional boxing or what most people perceive as professional boxing. Who better to ask than Mike Tyson, how does this fight line up for you? What, how does it feel? Well, um, the people speak for itself. I don't even have to ask them. All right, thank you very much, sir. Biggest live gate in U.S. boxing history outside of Las Vegas, numbers don't lie. So people want to see this, and that's an amazing accomplishment. Credit to Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano and Mike and everyone on the card as well, Naraj, Mario Barrios, Winderson, everybody, Bruce Garrett, every, literally everyone, Lucas, everyone. So we all did this together, and this is a, a statement that we had the biggest live gate outside of Vegas in U.S. boxing history. Uh, actually, I did want to ask Niraj a question, if I can. I know uh, about a year ago, you were, you were crashing the party in Puerto Rico, trying to pick a fight with this man. Now you joined MVP. 
and you'll be going up against Winderson in this anticipated bout. Why, why the switch? Why did you go from wanting to fight Jake to teaming up with him? Uh, so, Winderson Nunes, and after that, Jake Paul, before this KSI, I'm here for my country. I'm here for my country, younger boxer. I want to tell them nothing is impossible when I start boxing 18 years back. So I had a dream to sharing stage with Mike Tyson, and I'm here today. So this all are in my way. He's also in my way. Oh, wow, OK. So I guess he's, uh, you, you still have him in your crosshairs. You still want to fight him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. I'm. I'm gonna go. To, we're, we're on the. We're on the same team, and I respect him and all that. But I'm. I'm gonna go to India and beat his ass for sure. Okay. Uh, well, for Winderson, if I can ask, you'll be fighting Naraj. Uh, are you impressed with what he's done? He talks a big game. Look at the. Look at the schedule that he just laid out. And I know you're a little newer to the fight game. Are you impressed with your opponent, Niraj Goyad? And I do believe your interpreter is here as well. Então, essa pergunta é para você agora. Você acabou de ouvir aqui o Neraj falar sobre essa lista de pessoas que ele quer lutar. Eu sei que você é um pouco mais novo nessa caminhada de lutas e eu queria saber, você está impressionado com o papo dele, com o histórico dele? Como que você se sente com relação a essa luta? Eu me sinto como se eu tivesse mentido no currículo e tivesse me assentado no, aceitado no emprego depois de ver todas essas pessoas aqui de peso. I feel like as if I lied on my resume and I just ended up here in the midst of this huge group here, amazing group tonight. That's amazing. I appreciate the humility. Okay, let's go back to the media. Hi, Mr. Tyson, I just want to ask a little question. Can you share us why did you say this sentence? The fear of losing is too much fighting than dying. And what would you lose if you lose this fight? Thank you. I'm not going to lose. <laughs> but but you, you say that in the last minute of the second. I am not going to lose. Did you hear what I said? Thank you. That's, that's the one I was talking about earlier. Uh, back to the media, right over here. So, uh, Colm Keyes from the Irish Independent in Dublin, and my question is for Katie Taylor. Katie, you were involved in that epic Madison Square Garden fight with Amanda Serrano. Uh, halfway through it, you looked in a little bit of trouble, you finished strong. What was your thoughts at the end of that fifth round? Um, I think for every single fighter, we're, all, we're always prepared for, for moments like that. Uh, that's, that's why we train so hard. Um, when you're in shape, when you're fit, you recover so well from those moments. And um, I take a lot of reassurance and, and a lot of confidence from that because I took her bigger shots and I wasn't stumbled, I wasn't moved. And I, I won the second half of that fight. So I take a lot of reassurance going into the rematch um, because of that. So, yeah. Uh, if I could ask Katie a follow-up. Uh, Jake said in an interview earlier this week that uh, your longtime promoter and friend Eddie Hearn will actually be in your corner. I think that's a first for him. Is that is that accurate? Um, I'm not too sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I believe Jake said that, right? Jake, did you say that? That's what they submitted through the promotion. It doesn't surprise me because he's a cloud chasing bitch. So yeah. Oh. I thought that would be a cool scene. I thought that would be cool, different, but uh, we'll find out on Friday. Another reason to tune in. Back to the questions we go. Yeah, hi, uh, Kira Mulvaney from Boxing Scene. This is for Katie and Amanda, and it's a question about legacy. You know, I would not be surprised to find 10 years from now uh, female champions talking about wanting to be inspired to take up the sport by watching what you two did at Madison Square Garden two years ago. And I'm curious whether you guys think a lot about your legacy, what you mean for girls and young women around the world, and how can you build on that on Friday? Well, definitely legacy is very important, but my goal is to motivate and inspire these young girls, the new generation in this sport, that you can do anything you put your mind to. If you believe in yourself, have a great team, you can go far. And um, like I've been saying, we don't, when I say how much I make, it's not bragging. It's to show these women that we can make it. We're capable of making it. We're capable of breaking records and just strive to, for excellence and you will achieve it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, um, I think for, for me that's uh, the greatest part about this journey as well, is uh, just being able to, to inspire and impact the next generation of female fighters. And uh, when I started boxing as a nine or ten year old, there was no female fighter at all that I knew in, in the boxing gyms in Ireland, but every single boxing gym I walk into and now at home is packed with female fighters and that to me is, um, that's what legacy is all about really. And um, I think what me and Amanda have done over these last few years, inspiring that, that generation of young, young fighters is the best thing we, we could leave behind in this sport. It's an absolute privilege. I'm dying to ask Shushu a question. Shushu, you're one of the, the top rising stars in the sport. And I'm going to put you on the spot here. I hope you don't mind. You were on a top rank card. I believe you were at the theater attached to Madison Square Garden. And you cut a promo in honor of this man who also hails from Brownsville one of the most infamous Mike Tyson promos. You got it for us? It was incredible. You freaking nailed it on that night. And I think that's what led to him calling you and telling you how much he appreciated that. Spit some bars for us. Uh, <laughs> I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Listen, I'm Jack Dempsey. There's nobody like me from Nair Claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defenses are pregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want you his children. Praise be to God. Yeah, well done. Well done. Mike, can I ask if you heard that from another young man from Brooklyn? What does yes. that mean? Yes, he is very, very eloquent, but that day I was off my meds. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's it mean to you, Shushu, to be on a card with a legend like Mike Tyson who comes from the same part of the world as you? Man, it means the world to me. It's honestly something that I would have never thought about. You know, I, around, around the time I started boxing, he was already retired, not even thinking about him coming back around and doing this here. And this is honestly just a dream come true. I want to give a big thanks to Mike Tyson for being able to have me on his card, MVP, everybody that was, you know, a part of this whole situation. And I'm just ready to put on the show, man. I'm ready to put on the show and show everybody what the Shushu Show has to deliver. I love it. Looking forward to it very much. I do have to ask a question before we get back to the media, to Lucas Body. I'm still in awe of what you did back in July. Let's be honest, my man, great record, but I think that was the H2O Silv Show. And you went out there and pulled off, in my opinion, the best knockout of the year. If we get something better than that in the next two months, God help us all, because that was the most vicious knockout that I've ever seen live in front of a boxing ring. How has your life changed since pulling that off back in July? Well, I'm a part of this incredible event, historic event. I'm honored to be here. It's an amazing card on Netflix for the first time. And uh, knockouts is what I do. So you guys are in for a show. Can't wait. Let's go back to the media. Jack Fig from The Sun in London. Question for Amanda. It's been two years since that great fight with, with Katie. You've obviously had fights since then while we wait for the rematch. How, how tough was the wait to get to this point? Uh, why, why, why are you waiting to get the, the, the shot at revenge? Well, thank you for asking because a lot of people don't acknowledge I am going up three divisions, um, being the unified featherweight champion. But it's always hard for me and uncomfortable when I have to leave my weight class where I feel comfortable at. So um, just I have to eat a lot more, um, a lot more protein, a lot more carbs just to make sure that I feel good at the weight. Um, I'm hoping that I can make at least the 138 tomorrow, but it is what it is. Um, you know, I, I'm chasing greatness, and that's going up three divisions to face Katie Taylor once again, and I will be victorious. Question for me to Armando. Armando, I know you're taking this fight on somewhat short notice. I also understand, correct me if I'm wrong, I hear you're from one of the most feared families in Rome. Can you tell us about the Casamonico uh, lineage, the family history. Why do they say this about you and who you're representing? Armando, leggi quello che hai scritto e volevano anche chiederti un po' della tua famiglia. Allora, prima di tutto, voglio ringraziare MVP Promotion, Jack Paul e Mike Tyson per l'opportunità che mi hanno dato. E tutto il loro team ci siamo sentiti subito a casa. Questo è il mio primo incontro in America, negli Stati Uniti. Complimenti al nuovo presidente americano, speriamo in anni di pace per tutti. Al mio avversario, Lucas Badi, canadese, faccio i miei migliori auguri. Non sarà un incontro facile per nessuno di due. Abbiamo stili e provenienze completamente diversi. Il ring ci unirà per questi dieci round. Io porto Roma con me, 
la mia storia, la mia famiglia, che ringrazio, anche la palestra Quadraro Box, il mio, il mio coach Silvano Setaro, il mio manager Marco e Jack Micheli, pugile italiano in cui ci sono cresciuto. Sicuramente sarà un incontro senza sconti, da non perdere per tanti che mi seguono e lo seguiranno da casa in Italia. Non sono abituato a perdere, soprattutto a mollare. Ci sarà da sudare. Grazie. Se avete grazie. domande sono qui. Bellissimo. So, so I say, first of all, he wants to say MVP promotion, Mike Tyson, Jake Paul for the opportunity. He's got a great team. Thank you, Jake. Really, they, they made us really feel at home. It's Armando's um, first event in the States, and uh, he wants to congratulate the new president. He wishes peace, peace to the world. Amen. Grazie mille. Uh, to Lucas, uh, he says good luck to you. Um, it's not going to be an easy one for you. You know, we come from uh, different worlds, um, different families, different, uh, you know, the way that we've been brought up. But you say you're going to be united for those 10 rounds. You're going to share a moment. You're never going to forget. So he wishes all the best. And he said everybody to keep watching this on Friday. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Mike. Can't wait. Back to the media, to the left. Hey guys, Ryan Morick here with Fox News. This is for Mike. You say you're not going to lose, but the odds say differently. Uh, how disrespected does that make you feel, and why do you think you are the underdog? Thank you. Hey, um, <laughs> I'm fine with everything. I'm fine with everything. Appreciate it, my friend. On this side. Hi there. Um, my name is Joe Barlow. I work with uh, The Chive. And, um, this is a question for Mike and Jake. Uh, we've really appreciated your shit-talking of each other, um, but we thought there was enough negativity in the world, so we were curious if you had something nice to say about one another. Well... <laughs> I'm getting booed? <laughs> wow. Anything come to mind, Jake? Well, I think he's going to look good in the picture when he's on the canvas and I'm standing over him. Anything come to mind, Mike? I'll take that as a no. A uh, question for the champion, Mario Barrios. Big opportunity presented to you by MVP. Uh, this is a massive, massive shot. Everyone's talking about your belt. You have the glamour belt in the welterweight division. When you got the call about this opportunity to defend your title on this platform, on Netflix, what went through your mind? Um. I was uh, I was stoked as soon as I got the uh, you know the the call for this opportunity. You know, big shout out to MVP Promotions. You know, to Jake and uh, Mike. You know, making this happen. Uh, there's no doubt about it. This is one of the biggest boxing you know events going on, and uh, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Happy to be defending my title in my home state of Texas, and uh, yeah, you know, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm just, I'm just ready you know to. Uh, I'm just ready to get this this week over with, and you know, uh, step in the ring on Friday. Uh, speaking of titles, can I ask Shadeja a question? This is a chance for you to, to capture that belt that, you know, not that long ago you tried, and now here you are again. What were the lessons that you learned from that first title fight that you're looking to not replicate on Friday? Um, so many lessons, just the main one. Um, first and foremost, I'm just honored to be here and share such a historic card. But just embrace the moment and show up and show out. Um, be proud that you're here and, and just dominate. Can't wait for it. All right, back to the media. Uh, my name is Kevin Garcia. I'm with Fight Hype. And my first question is for Jake. Um, Jake, you know, most boxers, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't name one of their first 10 opponents. Obviously, you've put on a lot of shows. Um, we're at a spectacle right now, a really big event. What do you say to the people who criticize your decision making when most boxers, we don't follow their career at this point? Yeah, I'm blessed to be in the position I am to be highly criticized. That just means I'm doing something right. And no one has had a boxing career like mine. It'll be studied and, and judged, but I've risen to the top in four years because I've taken risks. I was the underdog all the way up until Nate Robinson, and that's something that people don't remember, don't give any credit to, but I put it on the line against some of the best in the sport every single time, and that's why I'm here on Netflix against the biggest name in boxing right now. Thank you. And then I my second question is for Amanda. Amanda, I was watching the face-off between you and Katie, you know, uh, in the promo for the build-up to this event. And I noticed when the question was posed about three minutes, you seemed pretty assertive on your position. You know, you wanted to do it. 
Katie didn't seem as assertive. She said her team uh, had been informed, but she wasn't. Do you believe that? Um, listen, if she really wanted the three minutes, I think she would have suggested herself, knowing that I asked the first time. She probably would be like, hey, she doesn't, she's not interested doing it 3-12, 12-3 this time. But listen, it is what it is. I'm going out there fighting 10-2. Um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have less time to go out there and throw a lot of punches. Thank you. Uh, Jake, dare I ask, what do you make of Mike's demeanor tonight? Man, I, I just, there's a lot of shit talk online saying you're going to kill me and, and it's just nothing in person. It's, I don't know. It, it's uh, pretty boring, pretty fucking boring. Do you think these are mind games? I don't know, man. It, it's not working, whatever these games are. It's not going to change the result of what happens Friday night. I want to ask a question to Dana Coolwell, deadly they call him. Uh, you are from a, a long ways from here. I want to try to get this right. You are from the Manunjali tribe. Did I get that right? Close enough? Uh, yeah. yeah, Manunjali. Yes, all the way in Australia. Uh, yeah. Could you tell us about your background and, and uh, how unique it is for you to get this opportunity? Uh, yeah, I'm a proud Australian, indigenous Australian, I'm representing all of Australia, and I'm just happy to be part of such an, uh, something so big, such a massive card on Netflix. and. Um, Getting this opportunity, yeah, I'm just ready to show out and uh, put on a great performance and show why I belong here on the world stage as well. Your thoughts on Chushu? A lot of people calling him one of the top prospects in all of boxing. Are you as impressed with him? Yeah, he's a great fighter, um, and I'm, I'm expecting the best Bruce uh, come fight night, and that'll bring the best, uh, best Dana, and yeah, I'm ready to just put on a great performance. If I can also ask a question to uh, Melinda, uh, this is a big opportunity for you, coming all the way from Canada. I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you've been offered this fight in the past a couple times. The timing wasn't right, you said no. Why is the timing right for you to fight Shadeja? First of all, I just want to thank Jake Paul and MVP Promotions for putting this on. Uh, there's not only going to be one great female fight on this card, but two, so I'm really appreciative of that. Uh, yeah, we turned down the fight a couple times. You know. I was just starting in my pro career and I wasn't ready. We don't take fights that we're not ready for. And mentally, physically, I'm ready now. When I saw the posting for this fight, I thought, hmm, maybe they'll ask me to be on this show. And maybe two days later, I got the notice. So I'm here, I'm ready, we've been training hard. And it's great to see uh, women's boxing on a big stage like this and to see uh, another Canadian boxer as well on this uh, platform. Best of luck to you. Back to the media. Yes, this is Jacob Dedamore with the ticket in Dallas. This question is for Jake. Jake, you were just talking about your career and how it's grown, and you've said in the past that you want to be taken seriously as a boxer. So if that is your goal, when can we expect you to start fighting legitimate contending fighters in your given weight class? I think you're the same dumbass from the other venue. I asked that, that same, same dumbass guy. question. And you didn't answer And you're, and you're s sitting here disrespecting Mike Tyson to his face once again. I asked you, you a Do you not think that he's a serious boxer? He walks away. All right, back to the media over here. Chris Beltran, House of Highlights. This is from Mike. Mike. Do you see yourself fighting again after this fight? And if you could pick someone to fight Jake next, who would you pick? I'm just interested in this fight right here at the moment. And who would you pick to fight Jake next if you could? I'm not talking about fighting anybody, only Jake. Thank you. Uh, Abel, can I ask you a question? An opportunity for you to become WBC welterweight champion on Friday. Mario is tough, obviously. You're looking to make your own kind of history. In your opinion, based on what you've seen from him, especially as of late, what are the keys to beating Mario on Friday? Well, um, Mario's a, a very, very tough opponent. You know, he, he has the height and reach uh, advantage over me. I think the key to, to this fight is going to get inside, you know, showing up that distance. Can't wait. Looking forward to it, and good luck to you. Uh, we go back over here. Uh, hi, Łukasz Godlewski from Przegląd Sportowy Onet. I've got a question for Jake. Uh, you were in Poland uh, la last year for the Jus Usyk Dibua fight. Uh, and uh, you said there that you've got a Polish heritage, but uh, I believe you've never s said what it's about. W what are the details? Yeah, my, uh, I'm like 30 or 20 percent Polish. Dad, what? 55 percent Polish. Uh, and, um, which is why I started a, a, a hot dog company or, or a franchisee in a hot dog company. So shout out the doghouse. But it, who is it? It's, 
it's my dad's side, and it's like our great grandmothers that uh, came over from Poland to the United States. So that's shout out to the Paul family. Thank you. All right, uh, back over here, media. Hey everybody, Chuck Creekmer from AllHipHop.com. Um, a lot of us came up on Mike Tyson, millennials, Gen X, and obviously, you know, further back, like Muhammad Ali, et cetera, et cetera, Floyd Mayweather. Uh, Jake, you've resonated with Gen Alpha and Gen Z. Uh, from a boxing perspective, from a legacy perspective, what do you feel like you're bringing to the sport and the future of boxing? Yeah, man, just excitement, excitement. Big fights, big knockouts. You know, a lot of fighters go in there and they have boring ass fights like Floyd Mayweather and I've brought in up a lot of excitement to the sport, knocking people out in the biggest platforms possible, going against the biggest names and making matchups that the fans want to see, crossover MMA fights, things like that, fighting other massive names in the sport. So I'm going to continue to do the biggest fights, the biggest pay-per-views, the biggest streams across the board and just continue to push myself and I think people resonate with my content and just promotional ability. Thank you, my friend. Last one will be uh, from me, and I'll try my best. Let's see if this works out. I just want to go down the line from here to there, all the way down to there. Just give me a, a, give me a name, Jake or Mike. Prediction on Friday. We'll start with you, Shushu. No pressure. The baddest man on the planet. I am Mike Tyson. All right, that's one nothing. What about you, Lucas? Jake Paul. All right, 1-1. One, one. Shadeja. Jake Paul. All right, 2-1. Niraj. Mike Tyson. 2-2. Two, two. Mario. Iron Mike. 3-2 uh, for Mike. Amanda. Come on, Jake Paul. All right, 3-3. Three, three. Katie? You can never bet against a legend, Mike Tyson. 4-3, Mike. Abel. Tyson. 5-3, Mike. Winderson. Tyson. 6-3, Mike. Melinda. Tyson. 7-3, Mike. Mike Tyson. 8-3, Mike. Mike Tyson. Damn. Jake, the disrespect. It's palpable. I love it. I love it. You know, hey, when I see dumb people saying dumb predictions, I, I just feel bad for them. So at the end of the day, who wants to bet on it, huh? Does anyone want to bet on it? I'm, I'm shaking hands. So how much we want to bet on this? You said, Mike, how much you want to bet? He said he's good. That's what I thought. Bitch made. How much you want to bet? Mike Tyson. How much? How much you? How much? As okay. much as you're willing to lose, brother. So, okay, okay. So I'll give you my, my property. How much? Yeah. How much? My property is like more than one million. I'll okay, give you. Okay, deal. Deal. How much you want to bet? How much you want to lose? Bro, you, I, I, the time I spent taking a shit is how much you make in your whole life, buddy. Oh. Shut the fuck up. How much you want to lose? A million dollars, deal. We got one million here, one million here. Okay. Come on, you guys want to fucking do this? Put your money where your mouth is. How much money? Exactly. How much money? I did speak English. Exactly. How much money? A ring, deal. Let's go. I'm, I'm following up on all this shit. A million? A million? Twenty bucks right here. That's what I thought. It goes down in two days' time, my friends. Once again, most valuable promotions, Netflix teaming up. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Oh, no. I forgot Katie Taylor back here. How much you want to bet? As much as you want. I'm not losing. No shot in hell. Well, uh, do you want to bet your purse? Yeah, let's bet the purse. Oh, well, Deal. Yeah. Well played, well played. And I'm sending out contracts, too. The stakes have just been raised. Tremendous stuff. Mike, Mike final word from you. Give it to us. Dig deep. I feel it. Yeah, final word to you, Mike. Final word to the world. I'm just ready to fight. Yeah, there he is. Iron Mike Tyson, everyone. We're going to take a little break. We're going to wrap this bad boy up. The keys of is going to square them all off. Don't go anywhere. Friday, November 15th, AT&T Stadium. 280 million subscribers around the world. The most watched combat sports event of all time. We'll see you in two days.